Hello, geometry students. Here's your lesson for section 1-2, Measuring and Constructing Segments. My name is Missy McCarthy, and I'm a math instructor at Oak Miss High School. In this lesson, you should be able to say at the end, I can find the length of a segment, of a line segment, given the coordinates of its endpoints. I can correctly use the term congruent and use tick marks to identify congruent segments. I can recite and use the segment addition postulate to find segment lengths. And I can use midpoints and segment bisectors to find segment lengths. So there's only four I can statements for this particular lesson. Before we begin with new concepts, we're just going to explore the difference between a line and a line segment. These are two terms from your previous lesson. Um, a line is um, an object that extends forever in both directions. It has no thickness and it has no width, but it does extend forever in both directions. So that would be a line. Remember we name lines using two points on the line. So I would say this is line AB or I could call it line BA or I could give it a script letter and say it's line L. Whereas a line segment is only part of a line. A line segment has two endpoints and all the points in between. So now I have line segment AB, it's only part of a line, or line segment BA. I can name it in two different ways. Just using its endpoints, notice no arrows over the symbol. So the difference between a line and a line segment is a line extends forever and a segment is only part of a line with two endpoints. If we have a line segment, we can find the distance between the points of the line segment using a little formula that we have here. If the endpoints are A and B, we can take the coordinates of those endpoints, which I'm calling little a here and little b here, and find the absolute value of the difference to find the length of the line segment. Now this may all sound really confusing, but it actually is a pretty simple concept. So if I had a line, and let's put some marks on the line, like a number line. And let's call this point here A, B, and C. And let's say we have coordinates on this line, again, like a number line, where this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And length of the line segment from A to B. So when we want to find the length of a segment, if you have the mark over it, that is read segment AB. But if you don't have the mark over it, this is read the length of the segment. So if we wanted to find the length of segment AB, all we need to do is use this little formula, do the absolute value of the difference of its coordinates. So A, the coordinate is at negative 3, minus B, the coordinate is at 1 here, and so that gives us the absolute value of negative 4, which is equal to 4. So the length of segment AB is 4 units. So let's find the length of segment BC here. To do that, notice again, there's no line over top. Over, over top. If that symbol is over top, that's segment BC. No symbol, the length of segment BC. It's the absolute value of 1 minus 3, coordinate of a B, coordinate of C, which is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2 units. And if we wanted to find the length of AC, that is the absolute value of the coordinate for A is negative 2 minus the coordinate for C is 3, which is the absolute value of negative 5. And the absolute value of negative 5 is 5 units. That's how you find the length of a segment. Again, that corresponds to one of your I can statements. A very important postulate, remember a postulate or an axiom, is a statement that's accepted true without proof. And a very important postulate that we're going to use over and over and over again this semester is the segment addition postulate. Here's what that postulate says. This should not be an X, that should be an A. 
The postulate says if B is between A and C, so this point B is between point A and C, and I could also say they must be between means they must be collinear. Remember that vocabulary word from the previous lesson. So it is between A and C. They lay on a line together. Then that means the distance from A to B or the length of AB plus the length of BC ends up being the length of AC. Now again, we can't prove that, but it's something that we just accept is true. It makes sense. AB plus BC equals AC. And that would be what we call this segment addition postulate. Again, one of your I can statements is to be able to recite this postulate and then to use it to find segment lengths. So let's use the segment addition postulate. So we have a segment here, segment NO. And M is between N and O. So we want to use the segment addition postulate in order to find the length of segment NO. So if I look here, I can write the segment addition postulate. I could say the length of N, oops, didn't mean to write that, NM plus the length of segment MO equals the length of segment NO. Now we have some values here, or some algebraic expressions representing them. NM is 17 plus MO is 3x minus 5 equals NO, that's the whole part across the bottom here, 5x plus 2. So now I need to find the value of x in order to be able to plug it back in, find the value of NO. So we would get 12, oops, 12 plus 3x equals 5x plus 2. If I subtract 3x from both sides, I get 12 equals 2x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides and I get 10 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2 and x is equal to 5. So now to find the length of segment in O, we would end up doing 5 times 5 plus 2 because x is 5, which gives me 25 plus 2 which gives me 27 units long. So NO is 27 units long. And that would be our final answer. Now a new vocabulary term that's coming up in this particular slide is that of uh, congruent. And congruent just means they have the same measure. Having the same measure or when two things are the same size. So we can have what we call congruent segments. Now I won't always write the word congruent. There's a symbol that we can use that also means congruent and it is a squiggly with an equal sign underneath. And when you see that, that means that an object is congruent to another object. That means the two objects have the same measure. So we have segment PQ here and segment RS here, and you see these little tick marks? These tick marks indicate that those segments are congruent. So because of those tick marks, they have the same length, and we can say that means that segment PQ is congruent to segment RS. And because they have the same measure, that means they have the same length. So we could also write that the length of PQ equals the length of RS. So notice here, we say segments are congruent. These objects have the same measure, but we can say the lengths are equal. Notice there is no segment mark over top. Lengths, segments. Now, if you have a midpoint, a midpoint is nothing more than a point that divides a segment into two, here's our vocabulary word, congruent segments. So if I have segment A, B, I can put the midpoint on that segment. Let's call the midpoint M, and M has to divide the segment into two congruent segments. So that means that AM would be congruent to MB. So we could say segment AM is congruent to segment MB. 
And if point M divides segment AB into two congruent segments, AM and MB, then that means M is the midpoint. Now a segment bisector is along the same lines, but instead of a segment by, um, instead of having a midpoint, a segment bisector can be a ray, it can be a segment, or it can be a line that passes, oops, that passes through the midpoint of a segment. And if it passes through the midpoint of the segment, then that means it divides it into two congruent segments, making it a bisector. So bisector essentially just means divides into two congruent segments, cuts it in half, it bisects it. So we could have here, let me choose a different color. If we had ray, let's say, MC, ray MC would be a segment bisector because it intersects or it passes through the midpoint of segment AB and therefore this ray would cut segment AB in half making it the segment bisector. So let's use an example here or let's do an example using the midpoint. So it says D is the midpoint of EF, and I would argue this should say segment EF. So I'm going to draw segment EF, and D is the midpoint of EF. So if I want to indicate that D is the midpoint, I need to add my tick marks. So D is the midpoint of segment EF. We know that ED from here to here is 4x plus 6. And we know that DF from here to here is 7x minus 9. Now because it is the midpoint, that means these are congruent. So that means I can say the length of ED is equal to the length of DF. Or I could say that ED, segment ED, is congruent to segment EF. But because that's true, I can then say 4x plus 6 then has to equal 7x minus 9. If I subtract 4x from both sides, I get 6 equals 3x minus 9. Add 9 to both sides, I get 15 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and I get x is equal to 5. So if x is equal to 5, they want me to find the length of ED, find the length of DF, and find the length of EF. Those are the three things I have to find. So I have to take this 5 and plug it back in there. So I get for ED, I get 4 times 5 plus 6. That gives me 20 plus 6, which is 26. Then... I don't really have to find DF because I know D is the midpoint. So it means DF should be 26, but we're going to check and make sure we're right. So we get 7 times 5 minus 9, which is 35 minus 9, which confirms that it is 26. And again, we really don't have to plug anything back in to find EF because we know that EF is the entire distance. 26 plus 26, so EF is 52. Again, your I can statement is I can use midpoints and segment bisectors to find segment lengths. All right, so as a wrap up here for your I can statements, what can you do? You should be able to find the length of a line segment given the coordinates of the endpoints. You should be able to correctly use the term congruent, that's a vocabulary term, along with this symbol, and use tick marks to identify congruent segments. You should be able to recite and use the segment addition postulate to find segment lengths. And lastly, use midpoints and segment bisectors to find segment lengths. We'll practice this in class the next day. See you there.